point of clarification is that School Without Walls is now about 250 kids. Oh, nice, and they nice. they expanded the building. We, it, we've actually moved about five times, I think, in the past 50-odd years. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's 250 kids now. And it's also interesting that the... Uh, uh, the characteristics of the kids have changed dramatically. Hmm. Initially, it was pretty much of the 175, it was probably maybe 85% white middle class kids. Hmm. Now it's probably at least 90% black and Hispanic hmm. kids who are there. So it's an interesting issue in terms of curriculum. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Social emotional needs, right? Uh, given the socioeconomic status of so many of the kids who are living in poverty and experiencing trauma, you know the the dealings with those things in terms of the integration of those aspects into curriculum and opportunities, and also building structure. It's interesting that initially, when School Without Walls started, you know there was it was an open lunch for mm. at, from. 12 to 1 o'clock. Kids could go out and go to the local restaurants or whatever. Or they could bring their lunch if they wanted mm -hmm. to. We didn't have a cafeteria. So mm. kids just, you know, brought their lunch for the most part. Essentially what happened, given the transition of the, the socioeconomic status of kids who came to school without walls, they built in a cafeteria for mm -hmm. the kids to meet their needs. And, you know, some of the alumni are saying, oh, you guys are getting more traditional now or whatever. <laughs> right, right. Physical education was done in the community. You'd either go to the Y, you know, mm -hmm. after school, before school, during school, if you had a free period or whatever, and work out and have somebody write something up that, yeah, so-and-so was here and did this, you know, for an hour today or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. More... Poverty-stricken parents were concerned about their kids going out into the community. So yeah, yeah. we built a gym and mm -hmm. hired a gym teacher, you know. So there, there's changes that took place because of societal needs as well as exactly. Uh, exactly. individual needs. So that's kind of interesting. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.